Hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here, Locked On Big 12 Podcast. Today it is the 2nd of September, 2022. Happy Labor Day weekend. Uh, this is a, a reaction, not instant reaction, but a reaction podcast to the news that the college football playoff looks like it is expanding to 12 teams. What does it mean for the Big 12? Just some initial thoughts coming up on today's show. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, Josh Neighbors here, folks, Locked On Big 12 Podcast. Let's just get right into it. That's what you guys are coming for. So this was weird. Today, I was getting ready to call it a, uh, my hair is wet, just showered the whole thing, wearing the Virginia Tech shirt because I'm supporting my Hokies are one of the teams that I support, the Missouri um, you know, I, I was, I, I was busy evening and then I'm sitting there in the press box for a four o'clock game and get the notification on Twitter about what is happening with the 12 team playoff. And it was weird because my reaction was not like a, it was not a finally, it was just like a, it was me more rolling my eyes being like, why are we doing this now? Because it, this is good for the big 12. Don't be wrong. Let's get to all that here in a second. But You know, I saw a bunch of really good points being made. Tom Fernelli, I thought, made a really good one. He tweeted out, I retweeted this, and he said, um, talking about this decision, he said, announcing on a day with games instead of Tuesday says everything you need to know about what the people in charge of the sport itself, what, uh, what people in charge think of the sport itself, just shoving the regular season aside before it even begins. And also a lot of reaction about, you know, this ha- this should have happened a year earlier, which a lot of that I agree with. And that's why it's like, man, now we're, we're going to do this right now. We're going to they change some transfer or the transfer rules changed recently. We have this news happening right now. I forget what else we had earlier this week. Um, the TV stuff's happening earlier in the week. And it's like, man, why can't we do this stuff? Like, you know, not when the season's happening, right before the season starts. Because, you know, just it feels like this sport is always at conflict with itself. Um, and I will say this, like this sport has damaged its own long-term health more than really any outside interference could have. And so that is one thing that's really interesting about this, because I've seen a lot of people who are against the college football playoff expansion. Josh paid Barrett Salee. I work with Barrett, Barrett Salee. I like Barrett a lot. Um, he is a really good person to work with. Uh, I vehemently disagree with his take about college football playoff not being expanded. Because the way Barrett sees it, well, you know, a lot of these teams will get rolled by Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, whatever. Uh, a lot of them are not deserving to be there. Josh paid to the world of the same way, too. But I'll, I'll say this. A lot of those guys cover the sport from a national angle and really do focus on the big brands. I mean, our, our shows and big players, too, like our shows that we do on Sunday morning, the College Sports Sunday show, we'll sometimes focus on some other schools. And we talk West Virginia one day. But really, it was because of JT Daniels, who's a pretty marquee player that we talked about. And we really don't spend a lot of time. It's like it's all about the big storylines, which is fine. It's fair. But when you cover it from that angle, uh, in those angles, and you're really only talking about the really big brands, you you tend to miss like the forest to the trees. You, you really do, you know, seem to miss like the bigger picture. And, um, you know, like that's something that I think guys like Josh Payton Barrett Slee miss. When you, when you talk about like, hey, teams just, you know, being able to line up to get thumped by 40 or, oh, my God, we're taking away all of the meaning from Ohio State and Michigan. We're adding like less meaningful games. That's not necessarily that's like it's not true. And like, sure, to some extent you are. But are those games going to be any less clash of heads? Is Ohio State and Michigan going to be? I mean, you know, they're always gonna be playing for something. There should be a buy on the line. Right or you know, playoff positioning, obviously, uh, the chance to play for a conference championship, which gives you an automatic bid, it's going to be on the line, plus the rivalry game. Like, the Iron Bowl is not going to lose its clout. They're not going to lose the intensity. Uh, the, the you know, Georgia versus Georgia Tech, I'm just picking random ones, the big teams, not going to lose its intensity. Clemson versus South Carolina will not lose its intensity. Um, you know, Michigan, Michigan versus Ohio State is not going to lose the intensity. Sure, those teams are going to be a bit more safely in when it comes to an expanded field. Once again, I'll hit all these details here in a second. But those games are not going to lose a ton of it. And here's the thing. like This is not about making more competitive playoff games. It's really not. What this is about 
is down the line, you know, I mean, down the line, not in the future, but like down the line, like, you know, the other schools that are not at the top, having a chance, having access, having opportunity. When you talk about the sixth highest conference champions getting a shot at a title, um, that expands to a bunch of conferences where there's a lot of opportunities for a six, you know, for a, whatever conference you want to pick. Uh, usually it's going to be the AAC, I think, but, you know, could that could that could get changed, the Sun Belt, Mountain West. We'll see what happens there. But as long as we're talking about, like, the six highest-rated conference champions, and that sounds like the way that's going, opportunities are there. There's a lot of kids' opportunities to play for national championships or be in the hunt for one, right? The Big 12 should be in this every single year, from Kansas to Baylor to Oklahoma State to BYU to Iowa State to everywhere in between. If you're a Big 12 coach, on the or not just head coaches, if you're on the road recruiting, you can pitch to kids, hey, you have a chance to play for a college football championship. You, you're going to have a chance to do that. We have access to the field. Our conference, you know, unless something batshit, you know what, crazy, you know, batshit crazy happens, part of my language. I mean, the Big 12 team's probably going to be in there, right? So, you know, you're, you're increasing opportunity. You're increasing the amount of money that is available. You're also making the conference championship games much more uh, valuable because, like, that's a play, that's a playoff play-in game. Sure, maybe the teams in it are, you know, thinking, oh, well, you know, those teams, you know, it's not automatic bid, but – Let's see how it goes. I mean, I think they're going to have it seated to where, like, the, you know, it's the six highest rated conference champions. And I assume the four highest rated out of those teams gets the buys. We'll see how, once again, how it shakes out, whatever. But, like, those games will still have stuff on the line. People, I mean, this means TV networks want to pay the conferences for their product more often. They already do. But the Big 12, the Pac 12, I mean, the Pac 12, this is a huge godsend for them in some ways because they still have a chance. Even if they lose some teams, they still have a chance to have their conference champion be one of the highest six rated teams and go to a, uh, college ball playoff. And that, that's still a very real possibility for, you know, the Pac-12, the Big 12, Mountain West, all that kind of stuff. Like the opportunities have been spread out now. This is good. This is good for the sport. Th I'm, this is not about competition in the games. This is about overall competition and making sure every, like this is what makes the sport countrywide now. All right. This is what makes everybody's program feels like it matters and it's valuable and it's there not just Alabama, Georgia. We'll talk about Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, Oregon, and Notre Dame, Michigan, Michigan State. Like, we're going to talk about all those teams anyway. They're going to get their shine. They're going to get their rub. Sure, it's fine, which is fine. But, like, at least Michigan State's moment in the sun will be parlayed into a chance to play for a championship. At least Pitt and Baylor and Wake, you know, Wake Forest. The winner of Pitt and Wake Forest was going to be a playoff team last year. That's great. That should mean Wake Forest, man. Wake Forest. Almost had a chance. My dad went there. It's like 3,000 kids. Almost had a chance to play in a college football playoff. That's the way it should be. Everybody should feel like they matter. You know, does everybody matter in the long run? I, I don't know. I, that's like that's the sad part about this. But, like, at least we're giving everybody opportunity. We're giving them a chance. Yeah, sure, it's really difficult to do so with the AQs. Uh, it's really difficult to do so, you know, when you're playing schools like Bama and Georgia, all of them. Yes, they will most likely win more often than not. But at least you have a seat at the table and a chance down the line to make yourself more competitive. At least you can pitch that. You know, like for a team like a, I don't know, Utah State, right? Let's just say Utah State has an amazing season in the Mountain West. Them playing Alabama is not just something that could happen this weekend. Them playing Alabama is something that could happen in a college football playoff if Utah State has a dream 13-0 and season. Could have happened for the Chanticleers – over there at Coastal Carolina as well. They could have had a shot at it, at, you know, a shot to get involved, to be in there, to, to be in the mix as well. Schools like Cincinnati, who had to put two great seasons together, no longer have to do two seasons to fight their way in for that four seed, right? This is this is more access. This is more for everybody. So I just don't understand why people think this is bad for the game. Th those games will not get diminished. I, I mean, guys, the day that Michigan versus Ohio State is diminished is going to be a wild one. It'll be a wild day when nobody cares about that game. All right. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, seven and five Michigan plays Ohio state. Sure. The ratings will still be bonkers. People will still care. Uh, it, it doesn't, it does not matter the circumstance. These games are always big. They will continue to be big. The circumstances around like, like sure you lessen the stakes, but like the actual games themselves will be good. And also you've opened it up now to where more teams are available. Here's the thing. Sure, you, the one argument against this is that, okay, well, if more games are valuable, how does that work? Because it's still people just fighting for the last spots. Yeah, but there's more conjecture about spots 12 through 18 than there is about 
four and five and six. Like there is more, there's, there's uh, more variety, right? There's more variance, I should say, in your 12 to 16 ranking when we're stacking up teams, you know, or let's just say even 10 through 12 ranking, right? We're talking about these teams that are two lost teams from certain conferences, one lost teams from whatever conference. Like there's more of a conversation about slotting more of those teams. Guys, that last spot usually comes down to two, all right? There's going to be more of a conversation about more of these spots now, in my opinion, than there was before. More of these games the last week are going to feel like they have more meaning, right? Because there's some people who have a chance to just be at the committee's mercy in that final week, and there's some people who have a chance to play themselves into a championship game. Being in a championship game might mean more now. There's just more variance because we don't know what a committee is going to do with a 12 team playoff, six automatic six, you know, uh, six teams that are going to be chosen. I mean, and then you're gonna have the conversation about, all right, well, uh, you know, it's it's gonna be like basketball, right? We're going to have bid stealers. We're going to have a situation where you have bid stealing occurring, right? Uh, last year, if, you know, if, um, when Alabama won, Alabama stole a bid from a team that is down the line. Now I know it's Alabama doing it, but that's is that not fun having their conference championship game mean that somebody on the back end gets kicked out? Like it would it would cause an uproar, it cause an outrage, it would cause debate and conversation about that happening. I think that's important. I think that's fun. And so when we talk about you know better health of the sport, this is a sport that that has crushed itself, and it's still a massive sport, still very successful, but. You know, OU and Texas are leaving the conference. They have a lot of history in to go to the SEC. UCLA and USC are going to go play Maryland and Rutgers and Indiana and Illinois. So, and, and a lot of us are fine with it. Like a lot of people are fine. I mean, like, that's the way the world works. I understand this. That's the way it's happening now. I get that. But you can't be like, okay, you know, that's, that's cool. That's, that's all good. And then be outraged about college football playoff expansion. Like, it, you know, it's, it's not, it's not making, it's not decaying the sport in the same way that the, that the sport is decaying itself. I mean, this, this is a counter move to everything that's happening now. These two conferences are building up their firepower right now. All right. When you make a six automatic bids from the six highest rated conferences, it's, there's four people outside those top two. Those are four people getting in. So when you're talking about the sport decaying, this being bad for the long-term health of the sport, no, it's not because all of a sudden now four more conferences mattered a lot more than they did yesterday. The Big 12 matters a lot more than it did. Or the, At 9 a.m. this morning, the Big 12 was less valuable than it is at 7.35 Eastern time, 6.35 Central right now. The Big 12 is a more valuable property. You know why? Because the winner, probably going to be in a college football playoff. The conference championship game, probably going to decide who's going to be in the college football playoff. Guess what you're going to watch? That game at the sides was in the college football playoff. You know what game was really awesome and really probably very highly watched last year? The Raiders battling out with the Chargers for that final playoff spot. Absolute scenes, drama, and theater. Did I think either of those teams could win it? No. No, they can't. I mean, guys, the NFL added an extra playoff spot. The NFC this year, you you give me seven teams, the NFC, that should be the playoffs. It's fine, though. Like, is it really water in the product? No, we're not going to complain about more playoff games. Nobody's upset about Super Wild Card Weekend. Are you serious? That's that's ridiculous. Nobody like nobody's complaining about that. It's more of the sport that we love, and it's more opportunity for others. Will the outcomes be the same? Sure, maybe. But I've mentioned this, and I'm going to keep saying it again. Kansas State fans, you all are always my example. I love you guys. You guys know I have a, you know up and down relationship with y'all, but you all know I love you because you guys are a passionate bunch. You love your sport. Guess what? If y'all can't compete against Alabama. If, if Kansas State and Alabama are not in the same playing field in terms of conference and like, you know, their games, you know, it, it, like Kansas State cannot play Alabama. They're not in the same league anymore, right? Basically, Kansas State was FCS. Why would you care about the sport? Why would you care? If you wanted to watch a high level of football, you'd go and you'd watch on Sundays, right? You'd watch, you know, if Kansas State in the Big 12 got booted out of whatever the FBS football looks like in five years, all right? You'd watch Kansas State still because you love your school, which is awesome and great. And then, you know what? Why would you watch Alabama Clemson? Because if you're not involved with that, it doesn't matter to you. What's the appeal? And if you want a high level of football, 
why wouldn't you just go and watch uh, the NFL, which happens the very next day? Right. So this includes this. This makes more people invested. It, it this is actually like in the spirit of the sport. Now, look, it's all about me. I saw Pete Thamble today saying one of the main forces was making money. Well, yeah. I mean, at this point, there's there's three playoff games every year: the two semis, the championship game. Now you have round one, four games. All right, so four games. Round two, four games. Right. Round three, two games. Round the final round, one game. That is 11 playoff games. We're going to go from ele- from three to 11 playoff games. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. This was so dumb they left money on the table in the first place. What were they doing? The alliance was being ridiculous. That's, that's what was happening back then. So this is a clear progression for me. I, I will say this. like I'm not the biggest Bob Bowlesby uh, apologizer. But I saw what happened. I saw he has asked for comment and he's like, okay, of course. I do feel bad for him in this respect. I know we don't feel bad for him, but I do feel bad for him in this respect. Um, Bob got the you know, got his teeth kicked in by uh by Greg Sankey, right? Got the rug pulled out from under him, whatever metaphor you want to use. Had the maturity enough to go to the table and say, you know what's best for my league? Let's negotiate a college ball playoff expansion. That, that's what's best for my league. Went out and got four new teams, negotiated CFP expansion. I thought that was a really good move. And guess what? The Alliance turned it down. And then one of the members of the Alliance turned on the other and uh, is, you know, is, is currently contributing to the decay of one of the conferences. All right. And, um, and, and they said no to college ball playoff expansion together, all of them. And now we're sitting here and now everybody said, yeah, yes, yes, we should. Um, this, this saves everybody's ass, man. This saves everybody's ass and makes everybody else a whole hell of a lot more important. Will poaching continue? I'm sure it will. I'm really sure it will, but this makes everybody matter just a little bit more. And when you cover teams, not named Georgia or Alabama or Miami or Notre Dame, there are people out there who love their Iowa state football, Kansas state football. Kansas football, less of you all, but still. Texas Tech Red Raider football. Uh, BYU Cougar football. And guess what? You ma- you now matter. And you now you matter more today than you did yesterday. Is that not positive? Telling you all the fans, no, you don't matter. So when when, when Josh Pate calls people casuals, right? Like, you, I know the, the people who watch the show, listen to the show, you guys are not, I mean, that's not fan service. We're not casuals, right? We're out here on YouTube watching stuff, trying to figure out our teams. Caring about every single Big Twelve game, trying to figure out how that new that you know that that that, uh, that JT Daniels got it done, and watching that Bryce Ford Wheaton catch over and over and over again. Guess what, West Virginia fans, you matter a bit more today than you did yesterday. All right, because if you dread dreams of making a playoff, uh, if this was a, you know this was 2024, 2025, whenever it happens, if this was that season, your season's not over. Your season's not over. You still have a chance to go and have a really good season and win. And it's not over now. But you know, but if you ever had playoff dreams, it wouldn't be over. It wouldn't be crushed. All right. And like this, this makes everybody matter. It just it does make everybody matter. And you all are not casual. You know, these the idea that like people are casuals because they want to expand it. I understand the point. I understand the point. The stakes are will be lowered somewhat, but replaced by somewhat different stakes in those big games that you're worried about losing stakes in. So I just do. I have a big problem with with people saying that this is not good for the sport in a sport that is constantly eating itself and decaying and trying to tell certain fans that they don't matter anymore. This is a move in the other direction. I'm going to keep saying that because I think it's a very vital, important, crucial point that we need to carry through all of this. You and your schools matter. The folks talk about LSU and USC. Uh, in Ohio State and Georgia and Clemson and, and, and Alabama for a living, D- you know, will it matter as much? And just the SEC? No, this move to them decays their big games they get all the time. But they just cover the big games. They don't care about what happened last night in Oklahoma State Central Michigan. All they care about is box score at the end and what actually happened. They don't care about any of that stuff. Can Oklahoma State be a factor in the end. You know, they, they don't. You know, that's all they care about is the very end of the season and that kind of stuff, the finality of it. This pushed the sport forward. Now, look, is the announcement time of it bad? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a bad timing on this. Um, but I just have to say, like, I, I have really been shocked by kind of the people who don't who believe this is really bad for the sport. The access makes recruiting pitches easier. It's going to give more schools money, more schools opportunity. It's going to get us closer, guys. We're, we're now closer 
to what happened to that magical 07 season than we ever were because all those teams um, would all be – think about think about that 07 season when the Big East had all of that turnover. It was a revolving door, right? All of those teams would be like feeling like they're in the catbird seat for a week for a college football playoff spot. Some of them might even make it. Rutgers and USF in West Virginia, all of those schools. Yeah, but I think UConn got up there at one point. All of those schools that were cycling would now be involved once again. So I just wanted to say that like this is good for the Big 12. This is good for all of college football, in my opinion. If you all want the specifics, here it is. I'm going to read now from Pete Thamel and Heather Denich. Um, 2026, but it's encouraging the sports commissioners to try to do it by 2024. The CFB board of managers did this. Um, the 11 presidents chancellors approved a 12, the original 12 team model, which was first made public last summer. That includes the six highest ranked conference champions and six at large teams. There's still quite a, quite a few issues to be resolved. Some very obvious logistical ones to be resolved, but our hope is we can get the commissioners to move as quickly on this and do it possible, you know, as quickly as possible, whatever. We asked our commissioners, the management committee to explore the possibility of beginning the 12 team playoff format, the 2026 season, um, before the 2026 season, in either 24 or 25. The 10 FBS commissioners and Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbrick, who will be in favor of this, will meet Thursday in Irvine, Texas, to begin discussions on possibly imp implementing the format as soon as 2024. The rankings of the teams will continue to be determined by the CFP, which will largely remain unchanged. The four highest-ranked conference champions will be seeded one through four, with each receiving a first-round bye. Teams seeded 5 through 12 will play in each other in the first round on either the second or the third weekend of December. The quarterfinals and semifinals will be played in bowl games on a rotating basis, and the championship game will be at a neutral site as under the current four team for the, the team format. All right, so it says quarterfinals, semis, and um in the bowl games or in the, in the final. That does not leave out the first round. The first round is 5, 12, 6 through 11, 7, 10, and 8, 9. Quarters would be round two where 1, 2, 3, and 4 plays them. So it does – so while quarters, semis, and the final are going to remain intact with the bowl format, that first round up for grabs on campuses, guess what? Another great thing for the sport. The good is just outweighing the bad here, in my opinion. Um. Let's see, common purpose, all that kind of stuff. Excuse me. Uh, I'm reading anything more here. Uh, oh, yeah, here, George Klyavkov. The Pac-12 is strongly in favor of CFP expansion and welcome decision of the CFP board. Duh, this helps your conference. Like, the Big 12 is in a great spot. The Pac-12 is in a better spot now. Like, the Pac-12 could lose teams, still be fine. But Brett Murphy did mention today that Arizona and Arizona State could be members of the, Pac of the Big 12 in three years. We'll get to that at a later date. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, once again, I would love to see them put these games on campus, but you know, we can't ask for too much from these folks too fast, right? Got to pace them. We're not, you know, they're not, they're not the best, the most fastest working group out there, uh, with this stuff. So a lot of positivity coming from this folks, but to the people that say it's negative, they don't, they don't understand what it's like to be in a conference. You know, they don't cover the league and it's always, you know, talking about survival and whatnot. Like, this is a massive win for the survival of leagues everywhere and for the future of college sports. I can't guarantee that the contract is going to be huge, massive, whatever for the Big 12, but this keeps them in the mix. It keeps them in the mix for a championship every single season. And guess what? If a Big 12 team is in a playoff to play in the championship every single season, that is a win for our league. Okay? We had a great year last year. What a phenomenal year we had last season. OU was really good. Oklahoma State was better. And Baylor ends up being the best by just inches. None of those teams played for a championship. And I'd argue that, that two of them, with the seasons they put together, deserve to do it. Des deserve to have that opportunity. You know, if you say, well, they're not better than Alabama. Yeah, that's that's like, that's like that's relatively speaking. Like if you're saying qualifying for a championship is not should not be based off of how good the other teams are. If the Patriots go 16 and 0, does that mean the Giants who are 8 and or you know what were they were that year? 9 and 7 shouldn't be in the playoffs. No. No. I I used to not agree with this, but I'm kind of come around on this now. I'm a huge believer. I'm a huge believer 
that, uh, you know, it's just like the, the relative theory is not what we should be basing it off of. Every single year I used to say, there's not eight teams worth playing for a championship. Well, it's not about eight teams being worth playing for a championship. It's not eight teams on their own succeed. Like that, that was just because I was comparing, you know, Washington to Alabama. Well, Washington can't hold Alabama's jockstrap. Yeah, who cares? They won the conference. They won their league. They went 12 and one. Uh, and, and that's and that's what I think long term will make a at the very least this makes everybody feel more valuable. It does make everybody more valuable. And B, it um it could could even the playing field could just a little bit, not fully, but it could. So I, I think that's something to consider also. All right, that will do it for today's show. Make sure you find us on Twitter at lo big twelve. Find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Enjoy your weekend of football, folks. Just had to get this up there. Had to get this off my chest. Hope you guys enjoy. Until next time, my friends, as always, stay safe.